Hello everyone, I8038SX and you are looking at another compact laptop. This one, to be exact, is a compact Armada 1580DMT. One of my very first laptops, if not my very first laptop, was one similar to this machine right here. I believe it was a compact Armada 1571DM. I bought that one in lieu of the IBM ThinkPad. Well, you know, much like most corporate companies, I kind of went with that logic and uh, went with the bottom line. And the first machine, there was some regret with that because six months later it died. It committed suicide. Its last thing it put on its display was a nine and two happy faces. The nine part was supposed to be there because it was doing a RAM count, but the happy faces weren't. So. But I gave the Compaq Armada 1571 DM a second chance. It was a store I bought it from, Computer Renaissance, if you remember them. They had a whole stockpile of these. I bought a second one. I think they gave me a discount on it for being a return customer or whatnot. And that one was much better. So, a lot, lot better luck with that one. And I regretly, well, with great regret, I threw it away in the Great Purge of 2012, and we know we can we can cry about our past later. But right now we are going to look at this 1580DMT. So first thing is first. I guess I can. Uh, we have four buttons that are multifunction buttons. You have a two power buttons. Outside of missing this piece here, a cover for the hinges. It seems like it might be an okay shape so far. Here tells you where, if the machine is on, this one will tell you if it's charging the battery or whatnot. Whether that battery is actually any good in this instance, we will find out. You got card bus, a modem, which was a, on my 1571 was an absolute pile of junk. It only connected at 7.2 kilobits. Uh, three and a half inch floppy, which could be changed out for a second battery. So you, that part of the first compact Armada 1571 did last until the Great Purge of 2012. So I was running one of these with two batteries, and it worked out real good. You got PS2, infrared, docking station port, which I will tell you right now is completely useless because it basically replicates the same ports the machine already has. VGA parallel and serial of course. Now one thing to note on this guy, the 1571DM along with other 1500 series has a USB port right here. This one has no such thing. So finally, sound, volume control if the driver is installed, and a 20 speed CD-ROM if I remember my history lesson correctly. And, all right, cool. So first thing is first, this thing's been plugged in for a while. Let's see if it turns on at all with the battery. I doubt that it will, but... Oh, did. And as you can tell, immediately it has 32 megs of RAM. We'll plug in. Remember what I said about the first compact Armada I had? It had a 9 and 2 happy faces? had 96 megs of RAM. That's why the 9 was right and the rest of it wasn't. All right. and, oh, it has the BIOS utilities on it. It did not catch that time, unfortunately. And just a reminder to those that are new to this channel, absolutely everything on this channel is unscripted and sometimes unusual events like that like plywood falling over happens let's see if that fares any better one of these days i'll clean up in here and actually move this table to a nicer location Hard drive's just churning. 
the original description of this laptop was that it froze up on startup. We'll see if that happens here. Just from the looks of this, it looks like that this is going to go to safe mode immediately. And considering that it is taking a really long time to get in said safe mode, this is not going to look too good. Wow. And it looks like it's got some uh, screen imperfections like right here and here and here, so maybe that's why it was 30 bucks. Alright, so we uh, now have the desktop, and well, there's a lot of goodies on here, so let's check this out briefly. And do keep in mind, um, if there's any personal data on here or anything that YouTube would flag, I am going to immediately cut this off and not do any exploration groups. Or, so we got the old version of, so this is a full on Adobe Acrobat? That's eh, just a reader. Okay, that I got excited there for a second. Insurance Group General Wealth Planning Suite. This had a Cisco card in it one time. Hoyo Classic Board Games on a Business Machine. Shame, shame, guys. Lotus Notes. We have an Opera Browser. And WinZip. Let's see if it's registered because I am always curious. It's 6.3, 32-bit. And this is a unregistered version of WinZip, so these folks did not pay the full dollars for WinZip. And we got Lotus Notes, which I actually I have no idea what it does, as I've never used it. Looked like it was owned by a David and uh, Michael and P and G, but I'm not gonna go actually into any of that if it allows me to not do that, because there is personal data at bay. So I don't want to be. If you run a DOS program in safe mode, eh, corrupting the video. Okay, we won't do that. What's Internet Explorer? Hunt for. So we're on Internet Explorer five. So I think this machine did get some heavy use in its life. I don't know. I'm gonna try something here. All right, so we're gonna have to look at that real quick. But it looks like this uh, might not be as easy. In the past, I have been able to 
go into a, like an XP machine and do MS config and all that fun stuff and go normal mode. But I don't remember how to do that. Uh, in Windows 95 or 98. Yeah, it goes straight to uh, I don't know. Well, we're not going to save this hard drive anyway, so I'm not overly concerned with that. So let's see if we can find any more information about this. Wait a minute. We have a bigger problem on our hands. We have a dead keyboard or a partially dead keyboard. No help topic. I have no down arrow, so that's a little disconcerting. Yeah, no down arrow, so that'll be something we'll have to look at. Keyboard is awful loose on here, so there may be just something that's just dislodged. We'll see. We're gonna we'll find out together. The keyboard is also bowed or got a key loose. I'm not sure, but yeah, the F10 doesn't work either. So. Let's tear this thing apart a little bit and let's see if we can fix that at least. But to get to the keyboard, I am going very much into my old part of my brain here that has not done anything of significance for probably north of 20 years. So if I remember correctly, there is, yep, there is one screw for the keyboard here. There's supposed to be one here, but it's not present at the moment. And we remove the floppy drive with a little... Oh, yeah, where that came from. But now at this point, we are going to go find our Torx screwdriver bit. I need a T8 or a small flathead to achieve this. And let's see what we got around the old tool stand, shall we? All right, trusty T8 Torx. And the key board screw that I am taking apart now is very loose, so that's a little bit concerning. I have a feeling, oh, one was actually attached properly. How about that? I do have a purpose for this laptop, although maybe with the condition it's in, I don't know if it's going to be possible, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You're going to learn a few things off of this because there are a number of repairs you could do once those three screws are out. And, you know, it's just a matter of dusting off the old cobwebs and the brains and popping that keyboard off. I know it didn't take much. And I don't even think you had to take anything else apart. I think I doubt it anyway. I could be dead wrong on this and making a fool out of myself, but. Oh, there we go. So you pop her from the bottom and off to the races. See if I can get this keyboard ribbon cable out. I hope that I can find a replacement if this is indeed beyond repair. What in the white world going on here? Uh, 
now my memory does not serve me as well as I thought I did, apparently, because so I can pull it out like that. And survey says, well, I don't see any uh, obvious tears anywhere. That's the, well, wait a minute, maybe I do. There is a fold in the ribbon cable. The keyboard's also bent. So there probably are some problems with this keyboard that may prevent us from using this keyboard. Although for the stupidity that I'm about to potentially do with it, we may be able to get around this using a PS2 keyboard. Yeah, this thing is quite quite bent. Let me get it in the camera to show exactly how bent we are. Alright, so see right there it is a visible bend right there, although that one might have been my fault, but the other one's certainly not. Yeah, right there. Okay, so we'll table that for a second or two here. We have your RAM. If I remember correctly, with the 1571, I'm going to keep referencing that, it had non-removable memory. I'm just curious to see what this one is. This one doesn't say what it is. But the memory module is indeed right here. Your hard drive is right here. Your CMOS battery is right here. We'll take that out for exploratory surgery. And... It is, looks like an original, and it just wraps around there like so. It is a standard CR2032 lithium-ion Japan. That's about as standard as it gets. And a very teeny tiny connector like, and like so. I cannot hold the camera today, so that's nice. It's about as standard as it gets. So you can't really go wrong. So I'll put that back so we don't, since I believe this one is still good yet. Maybe we'll test that before I put it back together. But in the meantime, hard drive is right underneath here. And we'll curious to see how much RAM this thing will actually take. If it had 32 in it, I want to believe that the... I'm going to keep referencing my other armadas of similar variety here, and I want to say they maxed out at 96. So maybe that stick of RAM was bad, or maybe this one's a little bit different, or... I don't know. We'll find out. And this is an IBM OEM hard drive, and it's a fat boy. Like so, the 1571 came with a 3 gig drive, with a 9 millimeter. This one, is, yeah, this is definitely a compact original, if you can see the part number, 247-957-001. That is definitely a compact part number. So I want to see, I, I want to say this drive is probably bad, the way it was uh, acting earlier and how slow it went. But what we'll do here, I know I have no keyboard, but I want to take this stick of RAM out and see how bad this, uh, what we're getting into, or... So it is doing a RAM count, presumably because I pulled the clock battery out. Okay, so this is probably maxes out at 80 megs of RAM. While it's doing its thing, let's take a look at that. Okay, so it's still thinking about it here, so... T memory.
It's either 80 or 96, so this one is definitely going to be 80. Which potentially dampers things a little bit, but that's all right. All right, we can turn it off at this point. But before I put this back together, I'd like to get some voltage off of this uh, this battery to see if it's any good. So let's go hunt down our voltmeter and let's hope for the best. Lucky for us, our craftsman was nearby. Let's see if we can do this without. All right, let's uh, do that. Yep. Highly prepared as always, right? Three point something volts. I say that's a good battery. Shocked. But, you know, I'm not going to complain about uh, that kind of result. Now let's put this back in so we know this is good. Well, yep, maybe. Real closely here, and make sure I'm putting it in right, but I'm pretty sure I am. Maybe put it in like that. There we go. Now oh, she's in. You just gotta run it just like so, and uh. We'll put this back in. And that's kind of convenient, actually. I kind of like that uh, cover they have for it. Can't get the darn cable to go back in, but yeah, that's all right. Life goes on. Sure, this thing had a much more traumatizing past before I got to it. I'm hoping that I can save this one, but it's looking like it's going to be a coin flip either way at this point. And this was tucked in underneath here, but I'm not sure if that's the right thing to do. Alright, so let's try the keyboard one more time. We'll put the hard drive in. We'll put the RAM back in. All right, off to the races. was tightened properly the first time around but just in case it doesn't work not that it's hard to get this keyboard out but I'm gonna take note of that part number that two five four nine four eight zero zero one now let's see how hard this is gonna be I'm sure because I had it apart before it's gonna be a brat and then I'm gonna have to get angry at it and then yeah okay my French. Really don't want to 
have strained this keyboard the way I'm doing it right now, but it looks like... Wow, well, what in the world? There we go. Keyboard is back in its original position. Let's see now if we recovered some of our buttons. Oh yeah. I didn't get a chance to test a CD drive in this thing yet. Oh, there we go. It did. It did get the floppy. Didn't test that either. Probably because I killed that CMOS battery. That probably is going to cause us some uh, some difficulty in this process, unfortunately. There we go. It just took its sweet old time, but that's all right. I'm old too. Please forgive you. So let's... No F10. Oh, wait. Maintenance partition air. So that is definitely a sign of a corrupted hard drive, at least in some capacity. But lucky for us, we have bootable floppy. Despite the fact that it is uh, for an LTE Elite, we should still be able to boot and at least test the disk app drive. So, we got English. Obviously, whatever language you speak, that's what you want to do. Now, do bear in mind that this is for an LTE Elite, so the disc I'm using, so there may be a possibility that we're not going to get any useful data booting from this disc, but we go going to try. setup is not applicable for this machine so it's probably going to kick me out that's unfortunate so with the magic of video editing I'm going to find the setup utilities for this particular computer and then we'll try again and we'll see what we got so with the magic of video editing you'll see almost no delay 
but for me, it may take a while. So I'm going to stop the video for here for now, and then we'll come right back, and we will, one way or another, we will get into the utilities on this machine. All right. I like my odds on this one a little bit better, so we're going to run computer setup now, and we'll see what happens. Thanks to the services at ProtoWeb. No, it did work. Okay, perfect. So, anywho, I'm back to my tribute here. Uh, thanks to ProtoWeb and the RetroZilla browser, I was able to get this software in no time flat. So, that's good. So now we have a tripod that's moving like crazy. That's my fault. System features, and okay. That's system management. It's 150 megahertz Pentium 1. Uh, ROM is May 17th, 1997. Well, you don't need, you don't need to take a reading test here. <laughs> so I'll just move on. It's got hibernation, battery, medium, pretty standard stuff. Security management. You can put up boot management. Enable quick boot. Okay. So I'm gonna cancel out of there. Let's see what else it's got. It's got the ECP printer, COM port, compact serial port. That's interesting. Let's see what it says. I wonder if that's the modem. So, all right, so storage, let's see how. And just detects the basic, nothing fancy there. Let's see what the sound card is, if it doesn't even tell me anything. It doesn't say what the sound card is, but I believe it's some kind of ESS sound card card and system audio let's see what other devices are I'm interested now it's all sorts of stuff here you got PC speaker real-time clock and the time is definitely off and it's a like glorified Windows 3.1 okay so let's let's see if it'll let us install it And I'm gonna be honest, I think there is a possibility that we are digging into a Pandora's box with this. Hard drive light is blinking on and off. I might be looking for that partition. So, well, fun fact while we're waiting here. Got these discs all the way from a seller in the United Kingdom. And yeah, it's something insignificant, but I've never seen discats that were a flat out white color like this were, so you know, I just I just found that interesting. The labels are about as generic as you get, but at the end of the day, they read, they write, who cares? And I, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Made in Belgium. So I found that rather intriguing in itself. That may be a bad sign. Well, maybe the Belgian discats are defective or I have a problem working on my hands. I'm not exactly sure at this point, but just in case that's what we got going on, I am going to copy, make another disc from my stash here. Hopefully without breaking it. Yeah, 
I'm just gonna control alt delete it. This should go fairly quick, and I only need one disc, so that's the nice part about this. And I did repeat earlier that I believe the CD-ROM is bootable from this machine. Could be wrong. Could be dead wrong. Let's find its CD. Ah, oh, here we go. Original Windows 98 disk. There's, you can't go wrong with that. But we'll try it in short order here as soon as we get the utilities loaded on another disk. thing I forgot to do, I forgot to put the battery back in during this whole endeavor. And lithium ion, just for the record, so that's nice. Try not to pinch your hands while you're doing this. See if I can go hunt down a hard drive. Well, can we do this. Okay, maybe there's some uh, underlying problem with this machine. Maybe the diskette drive is starting to go on it. I don't know exactly what it has for disk drive on it, so... Oh, we're gonna maybe find that out sooner than later. I'm not sure yet, but... Oh, there we go. And we are going to see... We'll do an Alt-I. We're going to see what this does. We'll find a hard drive while we're doing all of that. I'm going to find one somewhere. This is messy. I swore it has 60, but I may be imagining that. Like I said, I don't know if the anything over 8 will work with these laptops, but I got the 60 gig drive for free. So we will see if that works, provided this ever loads. It's running very slowly, unfortunately. Now we are going 
Folks, I might be giving my life is full of disappointment speech here pretty soon. What is it? Expect nothing and you won't be disappointed. I think there may possibly be an underlying issue with this tar drive in itself or even the laptop itself might have some other underlying issue. But we have a 60 gig drive that I'm going to try my luck on. So let's get that hard drive out of there. The fact that it took as long as it did to boot to safe mode makes me believe more and more that this hard drive is on its way out. Seems like those fat IBMs, that seems to be my luck with them. Yeah, I know I should have pulled the battery off of this, but oh well. you need your Torx T8 to uh, get the screws out. There will be four of them. little story about the hard drive it came in a compact Contura Aero and the guy was wondering why he couldn't get it to work with his Contura Aero and there is absolutely no way that those are going to see a hard drive over 8 gigs but the drive did detect right away on my modern computer so I'm hoping that the Armada series does not have the same limitation across our fingers and there's your hard drive right there. There is a metal piece underneath it that you have to be mindful of. Hold one in, Seagate in. Yeah, hold one out, Seagate in. Something like that. But the Contour Arrow, also the I thought that the screen went out on it and was like, eh, do you want it anyway? And I took a chance on it. And fortunately, with just the brightness setting that I was able to fix in short order. So I basically got a whole goodie of contour arrows for next to nothing. And of course, the 60 gig drive, which did me no good in that particular machine, we might be able to put in this one. Let's hope. guy boy from Hong Kong uh, eBay seller from there and overseas stuff kind of makes me nervous I apologize anybody's from Hong Kong or China there but it's uh, 
you're gambling when you go overseas with anything and but this doesn't have any circuitry on it in the way like a motherboard does so we'll I think we should be okay Hopes and praise. Maybe a placebo effect, but I think that's going a lot better. We'll see. Very shortly. Yeah, maybe not, but that's all right. Now let's try to install. The diagnostics partition does not exist. Use the diagnostics diskette to create a partition. All right, that's enough enough of this. So I am going to go have to do the whole magic of video editing stuff again and find that track on that disk. So I will be back in a bit. All right, I think I found it. Keyword is found. Had to do a little digging, but. Early returns looking good here. That's more like it. We want to change your blah blah blah. Okay, so let's manage to part. Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay, well, we learned one lesson out of this, is that we do indeed need a different keyboard. But for the time being, I'm not going to be a death nail, so I hopefully find a PS2 keyboard within reach, and uh, we will continue on.
Ah, shoot. Great. A partition. Great. The partition. Jeez. Oh, well, that might be the end of this video, unfortunately. Is for whatever reason, it does not want to create the partition. Yank fast. You can see the delete, but it does. Not able to execute, please insert the setup disk. Alright, so last ditch effort. <laughs> ah, that's special. Can't win. And setup's nice and slow as it always is, and yay. Oh, Jesus, after all that, let's run the computer setup and let's see what it does. So I am very interested to see what it does for the hard drive, and that might be where we're running into trouble with this. Yeah, it sees it as an 8-gig drive, but does it really? So I think before I give up here for tonight, I am going to see if I can go find a hard drive that is under 8 gigs and see what we can do to get something going on this laptop. A right, little bit of good news is I did find the drive. It uh, came out of a Dell at one point. And I actually used the drive in something else for another video. And testing the limitations of Compaq LTE 5000 series and seeing what they can do for drives is where that ended up. So let's get this in quick. I am more optimistic about this drive working. These even work. Six gig drives are even good in, say, the early Pentium One Compact Pro Linea series. So I feel that this one is going to work just fine. And I'm trying to get it together as fast as I can here so we don't run up any more video time than we already have, but you know. Anything that goes unscripted doesn't come with an ounce of disorganization. Ah. 
All right, so that is in place. Let's do it. Not even gonna bother putting that other bracket in yet. No. All right, it's in. See what we can do now. Third time's a charm, fourth time's a charm, fifth time's a charm. I'm not sure what charm we're on anymore. We'll use the Belgium disc at for this one. Not sure what happened there. There we go. Let's see if we, uh, how much trouble we're going to go into here. So we'll press OK. I don't know what I pressed, but I think it's better. Now we got the um, um, rectangle in the upper right, so I'm not sure if that means anything at this time. So, to create your update, you must have both the setup and the diagnostics disks. Let's see what we can do. Insert the diagnostics. Not a problem in theory. go. All right, please insert the setup disk. So we are getting somewhere, I think.
loading slowly. It's making noises like it wants to load. Nice and slow. I almost want to think about stopping this and uh, let this do its thing. Is uh, we don't need to see it read a disc here and watch paint dry, right? Thinking about it very slowly. We'll give it another minute or two. I feel like something should have happened by now, you'd think. Every once in a while you hear clicks from the disk drive that it's slowly doing its thing. But I'm not sure if it's doing anything right now, so I'm going to stop you here from now until it does. Patience is a virtue, folks. So about three minutes after I shut off the video, it did get to this. So we'll get this the old... Uh, college try and we'll see if it actually loaded.
what's going on here. This is annoying. Maybe the one directly on the keyboard might yield better results. I'm not sure. Yeah, F10 does no F10 capability here right now, but I'm going to move on from now. So let's see if the CD-ROM works. I don't think this one boots off the CD-ROM, unfortunately, or the CD-ROM just doesn't work. That's unfortunate. So I think that's going to end this one for now. I don't know why we are not working anymore, but I think I pressed the disc so many times that we got her in a loop. So with that in mind, I'm going to end this one for now, and uh, we'll call this a part one, a very long-winded part one at that. So if you have any questions, comments, or constructive criticism, or figure out a way to get step 10 to work, please put it in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching.